Hey guys, Woodley here. We're back with our 20 kilowatt uh, Cummins home backup generator. Done a couple videos on this. Today's video is going to be focused on the spark plugs. If you're interested in the specific spark plug that you need for this and a very important little detail, you're going to get that right at the beginning. If you're looking for uh, kind of an overview of how to change the spark plugs and some other details related to that, you're going to watch the whole video. If you just like watching people do these things, feel free to go with that. What I found with this particular model and generator from the Cummins residential line is there's not a lot of content on YouTube, so I'm trying to provide some insight for those of you like myself who look to YouTube to find this specific information. And what I've really benefited from, and I'm going to share with you, is some of the comments from previous videos, some of those little details um, that can be really helpful when you're kind of learning how to do this as I'm working through and working out some of the kinks and some of the specifics to make sure that this is running when you need it to run. Let's get right into it now. What I had ordered when I had the mouse problem, story from another video, in the air filter was these K7 RTJC spark plugs. And they have these three electrodes on here. But what I learned from a comment on another person who had contacted Cummins is that the spacing on this is eight millimeters apart. And in the dash five, the K7 RTJC dash five, it has a five millimeter spacing. And when the engine is running on natural gas or LP, you want less of that spacing they perform better. Um, I don't have that one there. It's not available um, online that I've been able to find. I need to order it from Cummins, but this is what I have. The temperature is supposed to drop. So I wanna replace these out and see if I can at least get it running now and be in a better position if something is to happen. We've got a cold stretch coming out. I don't wanna be without the generator running. I mean, that looks as clean as it can be, but the only thing I can, I can think of is there's a little bit of discoloration on the, the used one, but I've got it, so I'll give it a shot. These can be a little tricky with their getting them back on. Just there's some spacer washers. Just making sure that you they don't fall out on you. I don't think it needs to be. Now, when you're getting at this back panel here, first thing you gotta do is take off these
two screws here so that this um, that back panel can slide out. But as you see, it's not gonna it's not gonna come out until you put the top down. So you kind of hold it in, and with your release button, you can bring that top down, and then this will slide out here. Now that is not what you want to see inside of your equipment. We got a dead mouse body there and I did have some poison that was in the front so it could be from that. Um, but uh, let me get some gloves and we'll clean that up. Well, you never you never really want to see stuff like this, but I guess that was one of the reasons why I put the poison in the front of it there. So, let's try to get this pieces cleaned out here. Suppose I should kind of double check our air filter and make sure that that is, um, not clogged up as well. Once you once you have your top off, these these top bolts up here are a little tricky to get at. But not too bad. You just aren't gonna get you're not gonna get right into it on those on those ones. So there's not much noticeable wear on that at all, but we'll try the new one, see where we go from there. All right, so those spark plugs really didn't look that bad. So I'm also going to check the air filter because that's where I had a problem before. I've got this um wire mesh netting on there so i'm not expecting there to be any kind of issue at this point in here but it's worth giving it an inspection and uh, everything looks clear on the air filter side that's our little modification you should do that if you have one of these save yourself a lot of problems another issue I don't I think I mentioned it before but sometimes it doesn't want to shut down after you go to the shutdown phase of it here um, on this I haven't um, I haven't dealt with this uh, I'll give it another minute see if it'll shut down by itself if not then I will turn off the fuel and then turn it back on, um, that should take care of it. All right, so we're back in service. The remote is on, the standby's on. It sounds a lot better, um, and we'll see. If we have something happen here when it's cold, I think we're in a better position. I'd much rather do this on a warm day like today. It's probably 45 degrees outside than you know in a 15 degree day so if you have some thoughts on it i'd love to hear it um otherwise i'll kind of keep you posted on how this goes with it and i'm definitely ordering those dash five spark plugs as well for this
If you're getting value out of this, if you like it, hit that like button or hit that comment.